So here I've got a power supply which was given to me because it's dead, apparently. I haven't tried it myself yet. We'll have a look at it, see what's going on. 230 volts in, 24 volts out, 240 watt rated. That's what it's supposed to do. So I've got line in connections here, so I need to go and get a cable and wire this up to mains. And we'll plug it in and see what's actually going on. Apparently it's faulty, I don't know exactly what. I'm just looking at capacitors through the screens here and I can't see bulging. Which is obviously the first thing you go looking for. Nothing obvious in the caps I can see through there at least. But it could be one of the small caps which usually runs the actual switch mode controller. That's usually what goes wrong. But we'll hook it up and we'll test it out and see what's going on first then we will try and fix it. So I'm prepared to try this thing out now. This is just going to be a voltage test initially. If the voltage looks okay, I'll hook this up to my electronic load and we'll see what we get when we load it up and see if it behaves under load. But the first step is to see what's coming out of it in case it's shoving out 240 volts AC or something because I don't want to shove that into my electronic load. You never quite know what kind of failure mode these things have got. So let's turn it on. Power is going in. No current draw whatsoever. And no power output whatsoever. No indicators on the front panel. Right, that's interesting. Now there's a switch here, it says single on parallel. I don't know what that does, I don't know. Let's flick the switch, go single. I don't think it's going to change anything. Still nothing, no current draw whatsoever. So it looks like it's probably popped an internal fuse based on that. So let's open her up. So this like it's got four screws in the back here. That's not the right screwdriver. Okay, that's bent up like that. That's interesting. <laughs> Does that mean someone's already been in here before? And forced to open, have a look. You have to wonder. I wouldn't expect it to spring out like that. Okay, here's the cover off. What's inside here? It's got some conformal coating. Yep, it's not wet, so there's conformal coating. Fuse right there, we'll have to check that. But let's have a little inspection around first, see if we can see any problems and see if anything's exploded anywhere or anything like that. That capacitor there is looking alright. Have a better look inside here too now. Those caps here aren't bulging. A couple more in the back there. Also not bulging. So, not bulged, not bulged, not bulged. There's a smaller cap just down inside there. Just in there, you can see it. Looks okay. You can actually see a bit on camera than I can see now. Yeah, it looks right. Okay, well. First glance looks okay, maybe it's just been overloaded. So let's check the fuse and we'll see what's going on there. But the way it's behaving looks like the fuse is probably blown. Fuse is blown. Let's replace the fuse. So I just popped a new fuse in. It's a 6.3 amp 250 volt ceramic type. Let's put a new fuse in. Um, that may be all that's wrong with it. I've had a look around, can't see anything wrong. Visually, nothing obvious at least. So, we'll just assume it's been overloaded and we'll try it out again. I'm going to pair it up without the cover on because if anything does spark or flash, I want to see where it's coming from. A 6.3 amp is what it says on the board. So, that's what's rated on the board there. Maybe it's today for inrush and stuff, I don't know. But. Should turn it like this so you can try and see into it if anything flashes inside. <laughs> Ready to test? Let's turn the power on. I'm going to cover my eyes in case it goes bang as, it, as I turn it on. Right. Mind your eyes. Where did it go bang? Is it safe? Can I uncover my face? <laughs> 3.5 watts being drawn. So 100 milliamps going in, 24 volts coming out, 
that looks fine. Was that all it was? Bare fuse? Surely not. Well, I'm going to put the cover back on this, make it safe again, and we'll put it on the load tester and see how it actually loads up. I've turned the power off and it's still got power coming out. Big capacitors. This thing can put out up to 10 amps, so we need to kind of load test the 10 amps. So let's turn the power on. And there we go, there's the voltage. It's got a little relay inside here which clicked, which turns it on, so that's quite nice. So that was currently at 200 milliamps, we'll try that first. No issue, that's not exactly surprising. The one thing I don't like about this, which is saying first signal I really need to fix, and I'll show you what it is. If you change a digit like this, right, that's fine. And it's doing half an amp now, that's all right. I want to change it again, I'm going to just push that and it'll go up. But then it jumps over here. So I went from 500 to 600, and it did that. But as it, it instantly jumped over here, so now I'm doing one milliamp at a time. It's one thing they need to fix in their firmware. Now I'm over here, this is the digit I'm adjusting, is this one here. Right? I'm adjusting that, it's fine. Okay? Off screen. Do it up again. It's now back on one milliamp again. Right? That, it doesn't matter which digit I'm on, it jumps over to the right hand one. They should just modify the firmware so it stays on the digit. So, Rob, you can give me a word about that. It's annoying me. Each time I use this thing, it annoys me. It's just a minor thing, but it, it's annoying. <laughs> Anyway, I do my one amps now. All right, so let's go one and a half amps. It's handling that just fine. There will be some voltage drop because it is these cables are a bit dodgy. I'm not using external sensing and that sort of stuff, so there will be a drop on these. The main thing is to see how it's actually handling it. All right, so I do one and a half amps. If I use a dial instead, that also do exactly the same thing. 1.6 amps now it's jumped over the, to the milliamps. Doesn't matter which way I do it. And we always have to bring it back over. So let's do two amps. It's doing that just fine. Keep going up. 3 amps is fine, 70 watts, 4 amps, yeah, 5, 8 amps, this is looking absolutely fine, 9 amps, obviously the voltage drop across the cables, and 10 amps is what it's rated for, 240 watts, it's managing it just fine, input power is 1.5 amps, and 275 watts going in to produce 236 watts coming out. So losing 40 watts within the power supply. But that's working fine. It's just a damn fuse. But that was easy. So just checking for ripple. This will initially jump around a bit and, and then stabilise when I first connect it. This is the way it's made to it. It's got like a buffer I suppose on it. So that's fine. That's a 1 amp. 2 amps. 3 amps, 4, 5, 6, 8 amps, 10 amps, no ripple even at 10 amps, look at that, nothing wrong with that, that's absolutely fine, that power supply is fine, so why that fuse went, it's a mystery, maybe there's a power surge, and it popped it because of the protection circuitry, so yeah, that's all working, all because of a fuse, I'm really surprised, Especially as it's not even drawing anywhere near that much current. So there must be some kind of power surge or some main power line issue on the AC side. And it's um, popped that fuse from maybe the crowbarring effect of the stuff on the input circuitry. MOVs. Yeah. So that, it could have been an inrush kind of issue with a MOV firing from a AC spike, which has then popped that fuse. That's really the only thing that can come to mind, because it's only drawing one and a half amps input like full current so it's not like it's been stressed normally even being fully loaded so it must have been some kind of AC inrush issue or something anyway it works other videos down below to watch scroll over there if not already subscribed page or sport link over there if you want to help me buy more fuses catch you later.